In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a fully autonomous AI brain that can 10x your ideas. It can take a sentence or a couple of words that you put somewhere. It can do full research on it, run it through multiple GPT agents and give you an output wherever you want it that is fully researched in any format you want. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it step by step. I'll give you all the prompts and resources completely free. My only ask is if you find this video helpful or interesting to consider dropping a like and or a comment down below to help with mother algorithm. With that in mind, let's jump straight in. And I've set this automation up for ideas. I give it a kernel of an idea and it turns that into a full on analysis that I can then just execute. But you could do this for literally anything. So to start, let me show you how this works to give you a feel of the kind of thing that this can do. So we start off on the left and with only literally um, you know, a couple of components to this, but this section here could be as big as small as you need to be. So we start off with trigger, which is Slack. So instead of having to type stuff in, this is so, so, so easy. And I've said Slack, but it could be any comms channel you want. Literally name it, you can use it, Google Docs, whatever. Once I've done that message, it goes through to Perplexity AI. If you don't know, Perplexity AI is this incredible AI search engine. You can type stuff in, it will crawl the internet, check out URLs, and it's better in that sense than ChatGPT or Claude because they've got an established knowledge database. Perplexity can search for things in real time. So if it appeared 10 minutes ago, Perplexity has access to it. So this is like almost the brain. I want you to think of this as the brains of our operation. This is the research agent. This is the thing that whatever we type, we know that AI plus the power of search is gonna find the most, you know, contemporary, relevant data sources to give us the very, very most recent relevant thing we could possibly hope for. Once Perplexity has done its research and given a specified format, which I'll cover, it then goes to our GPT agents. Now, every GPT agent, I kind of want you to think about as like digital workers, not like in a slave labor way. I don't want to get into the ethics of it, but essentially they are. They're like mini employees. Each one of these green dots is a mini employee. We've created these individual agents on um, ChatGPT or platform.openair.com. Again, I'll cover all this very soon. You give it very specific tasks and they are going to be doing the heavy, heavy lifting in this journey. So Perplexity gives us an output. It goes to GPT agent one, then GPT agent two to get the final output. And then once that's done, it's going to land in Google Doc or whatever output you want. And I apologize in advance if I look down at my notes. I just want to make sure that I cover everything so you've got all the detail that you need. So to do this, you're going to need a couple of things. First thing that you're going to need is access to make.com. I'll put a link down below in the description so you can access that and get started. It's a no-code automation tool and it's kind of similar to Zapier. People have their own preferences. Then you need access to Perplexity. You don't need to buy a subscription, anything like that, but just to buy some AI credits. I mean, I put $5 in and I've barely used any of it. I think I've used one cent in all of the automations that I've done. And then the next thing you need after that is access to GPT-4 so we can access the assistance within the playground. That's gonna be about $20 a month if you don't have access to GPT-4. And then finally, you need access to the Perplexity AI plugin. And if it's sound like a lot of detail, before you watch this video, I encourage you to watch a video I made just two days ago. It goes through in a lot of detail how you get all these five things set up. So if you haven't seen that one yet, go over there, watch that one, and I'll be waiting for you right away when you come back. Great, so with that in mind, now let's get started. You're gonna have a trigger. For me, that is gonna be Slack. So we search for Slack. We're gonna go on show more. We're gonna watch for private channel messages. Great, if you don't know, you can also make a private channel Slack. It's super, super easy to do. Automation, private. Now we've got limit. So basically you would set this automation to run, say every single day, just to save you, save you some costs, even though it's not that expensive. Now the limit, this is really talking about how many different of the inputs you're gonna have, are you really gonna use? You can put it 10, 20, whatever. Um, I don't really see the value in limiting it too low. I mean, if you put the ideas in the chat, then you may as well run it. So put 20, 30, 40, whatever you like. Once you've done that, you're gonna hit okay, and that's all set up, really easy to do. Uh, let's just say we're gonna put this to run, how often would I like this to run? I'd like this to run every day, perfect. Perfect, at that time, yeah, no worries, wonderful. Now we're gonna add a new module. Now the first module we're gonna add is gonna be perplexity. So if you see my last video, you'll know exactly how to get the perplexity AI um, feature within here. It's definitely worth it for the functionality it gives you. We're gonna click on perplexity AI, and then we're gonna click on create a chat completion. So we're gonna come over to our cheat sheet of how to create an autonomous AI brain. I'll put a link down below if you want access to this whole document that I made. And it's so much trial and error, by the way, like literally going through all the different specifics, but you can have that absolutely for free. I'll just, um, I'll put a link down below. Okay, great. So the prompt we're gonna give perplexity here is to act as an AI researcher to analyze and expand on a provided text idea, produced a detailed summary of the idea, the maximum 150 words, and conduct thorough research on the topic, including relevant data, statistics, and specific examples. 
present research findings in a clear, organized manner, blah, blah, blah. And then we go into some of the tasks here. We give it the idea. So carefully read and analyze the task to grasp the core concept, nature, and intent of the idea. Identify key points, ideas, objectives. And then we're gonna ask it to organize its findings into clear logical sections that cover different aspects of the idea. We're thinking about background information and context. We're thinking about key benefits, potential applications, challenges, limitations, future prospects and implications. And then crucially, this bit's really important. When presenting your research, use specific data points, percentages, and real world examples to add credibility to the depth of your analysis. That's so, so important. Perplexity, if you let it, will run off and do a million things. We wanna hone it in and be really specific. So that's really, really important. Ensure your writing is concise, coherent, and easy to follow. Your goal is to provide readers with a comprehensive understanding of the idea, backed by rigorous research of specific, relevant, examples. Cool, right, so let's have a look at this. Mistral 7B Instruct is the model we're going to be using, and the only, only field we need to think about here is in the messages. So we get down to role, we're gonna sign it as a user because we're gonna instruct it as a user, for example, and then we're gonna add in the content. And this is where we're gonna start with uh, this document here. And then we've come back over, we're just gonna paste it in here into the content section. Let's have a look. Excellent, so you see this text idea thing? This is a format that's referenced quite a lot through the text itself. So we just define what that actual thing means and then perplex you understand what we're talking about when we reference it and just in a little bit more detail for clarity. So what we need to do here is basically just align this to the message we get from Slack. So all we do is click on message here like this. Perfect, click okay. Now what do we do? Let's actually test that this works and it's good to do that regularly just so you don't build it out like a massive automation then it just completely collapses. So for example, let's say, I don't know, chocolate bananas, um, making chocolate bananas. You know, genius idea, why has it never been done before? I don't know. So we're gonna run the automation just to see if it can pick up the Slack message and how that gets fed into Perplexity AI. Excellent, run once. Slack is here doing its magic in the background. And one of the things I will say with this as well, it's really, really good to, if you, whatever your use case is, you can refine it massively as you go along, but there's a lot of value in making fine tweaks and just see how that affects the output. Excellent, so we've got this here, making chocolate bananas, perplexity down, doing this research online. Just having a, a free research assistant is so, so, so cool. So we come over here, for example, we get on to choices, plus one, message, and then content. And then look at this, guys. Making chocolate dip bananas is a simple yet delightful idea that combines the natural sweetness of bananas with the rich, indulgent taste of chocolate. I'm, I'm gonna stop reading, I'm gonna a little bit too hungry. So it's given the idea summary, it's given us background, it's given us benefits, challenges, future prospects, it's given us examples, studies, and a conclusion. Uh, just from one message in Slack, that's all we've done. Now we've done that, we're gonna add in, uh, we're gonna add in GPT agent now. So, so to add GPT agent, come here, Click Open AI, and then we're gonna scroll down for a message and assistant. Perfect. Well, what assistant are we gonna message? Well, you can select from drop down here. It's so easy to do. It's ridiculous. So assistant, we're gonna go for the idea, but the reason why I've set this up this way is a feature of the way that language models work. We've got an idea bot and we've got a critique bot. So if I come back to the complete, um, the complete setup, the Slack message is the idea. Perplexity does the research and gets the contemporary data. This GPT agent here is the idea bot. So what this will do is take the data from Perplexity and turn it into an amazing idea. It will transpose it into, here's the here's a kernel of information, a lot of detail. Now make this idea amazing in the format that I want. And then this little bot here is our critique bot. His only job is to critique everything that the first agent made and say, hey, is that good? Is that bad? Does that make sense? Does that not make sense? And you'll know this from experience. If you just say the words, critique that, or can this be improved? that like double the quality of the response. This is why the critique bot is important. This isn't just an automation. This is, this is combining best practices with using language models and automation. So that's why we need an ideas bot and we need a critique bot. So we're back to our ideas bot, perfect. We're gonna come over now to create the ideas bot. So all we do to do that is we're in platform.openai.com forward slash assistance. Um, and again, you need to get, this will be like API credits on your card, but it's like very, 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 very cheap from what I've used. Now come on to create and we'll call this one test bot Magoo. And then we're gonna give it instructions. So we come back over to our document here, for example, I'm gonna scroll down. Here's our ideas bot. So let's have a look at what we wrote for this one. So idea bot. 
act as an AI analyst and you'll see a lot of the time we're giving these guys roles. So whatever use case is, give it, be specific on the role. To critically examine and give an idea based on thorough research from reliable sources, provide comprehensive, well-structured analysis of the idea, considering its strengths, its weaknesses, potential implications, and future prospects. The analysis should be 800 to 1200 words, clear, insightful, and informative, covering multiple perspectives, including relevant data and examples. Ensure the output is polished, easily understandable, and actionable. We detail some things in terms of its tone, carefully studied research, the central female concept of the idea, the problem opportunity to address, organize your analysis into a well-structured logical flow that covers the following aspects, an intro, main strengths and weaknesses, potential witness limitations, implications of future prospects, recommendations and actual insights based on analysis. And by the way, if you want a video on how to create these for your specific scenario, just let me know down below. I'm very happy to help you with that. Representing your analysis, use specific data points, examples and case studies, blah, blah, blah. And then we do all the different things down here. And then we finish by telling it what its goal is to create a comprehensive, insightful and actionable analysis of the given idea. Uh, we ended it with instructions. So we copy this document here, idea bot, perfect. Come back over to our assistant, pop it in there. The model GPT-4 Turbo Preview, it is premium. It's it's just better. It just creates better content, it really does. And then this is where you can take it from good to great and that's to add files. So what I like to do with this is add files that you think are relevant to the GPT that you create. For example, here, I've just added a turn of voice file, which has a like literal mate, like 20 different pages on like how I wanted to talk and speak and things. And all you do is you click add and then turn a voice and it's done. And that is literally it. And honestly, that's like all we need. So then all we do is we're going to come back over to our new integration. We're going to change this um, because it's not loaded in just yet. No worries. So we're going to click save and just refresh the page. And I, I want to you know, I want to kind of show you these things where like things aren't appearing and available just because I think it's good for you to know how, how if you've not used a software before, like no code automation, how to actually troubleshoot it because, you know, I, I just hate those flawless presentations that like don't show you what it's actually like to use. So sometimes you need to just refresh it or it'll give you some complete bizarre like outcome you're not expecting. Then it loads in nicely, we click on it. Great, right, let's find the bot then, shall we? I know I'm on the right of the screen, so I'm always trying to move this slightly to the left so that you can get a good, a really good viewpoint of it. My open AI connection. And then for message, all we need to do is include the input that we gave it to the perplexity AI. Come down to choices, come down to message, and then content. Now, the reason why, by the way, I think it's good to run it as you go, because when you're selecting these and you haven't, if you haven't done a run through, it's so tough sometimes to know like, is it message, is it content? It shows you here, can you see like, idea summary, making chocolate, so you know, okay, great, that's a specific one that I need. It's just a little tip you might find helpful. Boom, perfect, then we click, okay. Right, cool, so let's try it now with a completely new message, making chocolate ferns. Come back over, let's then run the entire scenario together. Just checking it's got everything perfect, making chocolate ferns has appeared, perplexity. Uh, choices, plus one, message, content, creating chocolate ferns. Cool, so it's loaded, so we click on the one here. Let's have a look. So it has completed successfully. Uh, come down to plus one, come down to text, value. And there we go, look at this. The unusual innovative concept chat with the ferns, blending with technology, blah, blah, strengths and opportunities, marketing and branding innovation, sustainability initiatives, challenges, limitations, durability and usability concerns, implication of future prospects novelty, marketing strategy, future debt. And it also got like a five step plan for it to consider to get the whole thing off the ground, including the conclusion. And and bear in mind guys, like you can specify all these specifics that you want to tailor. I, I mean, I just cobbled this together as an example to show you just how easy it is. And also now all you do then is add a new one in there straight after that. So we come back over and we had our critique bar. And I thought just to speed up the last part of the demo for you, so we're not rehashing it, I've just shown you the automation I made earlier. So you click on this one here, for example, uh, this is the critique bot, and we just lick it up here, content, text, content generation, text value, which leads to this input here, the critique bot, and that's it. So all we've done is taken the output from this one, put it in the message of that one, and then to add the Google Docs, you just simply search, click on the Google Docs, and then on here you select the one that you want, which is content ideas, which is just a random document that I chose. You basically click here and it'll show you a load of options. And then on in appended text, that's the place where you put the output from the previous one there. So for example, if I click here, you can see 
as you hover over it, it flashes on the left hand side. And that's basically it. And then we're, we're literally ready to go. So we'll test the full thing out one more time with whatever prompt we want. So if I come back over to Slack, making chocolate Springer Spaniels for doggo enthusiasts. And to, I mean, it's not even grammatically correct, but you get, you get the idea, right? We're gonna hit run once, and then this will run in the background for us. And we have to bear in mind, this is just the kernel of the idea, right? Like the applications for this are insane. Creating a GPT brain to 10X your ideas, right? Think more about it. And there's so many use cases of this. And somebody else speaking to the comments talking about how we could use this to help people get jobs, or let's say you apply to work at Amazon to get a six figure role, how this could take your CV you know, we could search to the perplexity to find out best case, best practices for applying for that job and just help you get the job in so many different ways. So if you've got ideas for different use cases, let me know down below. And there we go. It's ported over to Google Doc. I changed the formatting a little bit. There was some other stuff in here just to make it slightly easier for now, but you can specify that with like documents that you give it. But look, idea score, implementation difficulty score, the concept of creating chocolate Springer Spaniels presents a unique and engaging idea that capitalizes on people's love for food for both dogs and chocolate, blah, blah, blah. Look at this, strength of witnesses, unmet market demand. And it's even got data in here, right? Talking about the valuation of the market, diversification support, it's called out weaknesses, um, ways we could do it, conclusions, next steps, ways it would get it off the ground. And a final hack for you here, guys, in the platform, the best way to get the ultimate response that you're looking for is to come, click playground over here, we're gonna come down to assistance and what we can do is pick the bot that we want. So this bot, for example, the instructions, we've got it and then enter the message and you can see the outputs that it gives you. And if it isn't right, you can actually change the instructions on the left-hand side in real time until you get the perfect output that you want. But this is just the beginning. There's so many different applications with this. I hope you found this fairly helpful. In any case, have a wonderful week and see you next time.